what's going on guys and welcome back to another video and this one i'm going to be showing you guys how to replace your brakes on your infinity g20 but this can apply to different mechs and models now if you guys are having a hard time stopping or you guys are hearing a scratchy noise or a high pitch noise coming from your brakes it's probably your brake indicator on your brake pads letting you know that it's time to change your brakes now it's pretty simple to change your brakes and all you pretty much need is a jack and some jack stands to lift up your car and some basic tools so let me show you guys how I replace the brakes on my car. So the first thing that we're going to do before we jack up the car is loosen up the lug nuts on the wheels. Now we're going to do this while the car is on the ground because if you only have hand tools, um, it's going to be very hard to remove these um, lug nuts while the car is in the air. So let's go ahead and remove them while the car is on the ground. Repeat the same process on the remaining wheels. Once you have the wheels loosened up, go ahead and jack up your car. Now that we have our car safely jacked up and supported by the jack stands, let's go ahead and remove our wheel. With the wheel out of the way, we can take a closer look at our brake hardware. Now what we have here is the brake caliper, and then right here and in, inside of the brake caliper we have our brake pads. Now if you are replacing just your brake pads, all you need to do is loosen up two fasteners in the back of the brake caliper. Um, but if you want, you can replace your rotors usually. Um, you can tell if your rotors are bad is if um, you guys are braking hard um, and you feel your front end shake side to side. That's a good indication um, that your rotors are warped and um, need replacing. Another test you guys can do is drag your fingernail up and if you're able to catch on to the edge of the rotor, that usually means that it's warped as well. In my case, um, my rotors are not in bad condition so I'm not replacing them. I went ahead and turned the caliper in my direction so that I'm able to work on it a little bit easier. Now, when we look at the caliper, we have two fasteners on the front of it. We have one up here and one down here. Now, these are the two fasteners that we want to remove so that we can get access to our brake pads. These are going to be both 14 millimeter bolts, so go ahead and remove those. With the two fasteners removed, you should be able to just lift up your caliper out of the way. Just like that. What you guys can do is hang this up, up here so that it's not hanging off of the um, brake line right here. With our caliper out of the way, we can remove the brake pads. They should just slide off. Now in my particular case, I'm not having any issues with my brake pads. But if for example, we had a lower side right here and a higher side, indicating that one side is wearing uh, more than the other, we would have to look at these um, sliding uh, pins right here for the brake. Now, when these are going bad, usually they tend to stick or um, they just stop sliding back and forth. When you press on the brakes, one side of the brake um, gets compressed more than the other, and that is what causes one brake, uh, one side of the brake pad to wear out more than the other. Uh, a simple fix for this is to remove the boot right here and put some um, silicone paste or um, some uh, sliding caliper pin uh, grease on here so that it can flow nice and um, even right here. So we wanna do that to both. I was looking at this sliding pin right here and for some reason it's stuck on here. Now I can't get it to go back into its bore so I went to the um, auto parts store and got some grease, brake uh, caliper grease for the sliding pin. So let's go ahead and uh, remove these sliding caliper pins out of the way and let's give them a good clean. So pretty much what we're going to do is just remove the boot 
And then we're gonna get off any of the old grease out of the way so that it's nice and clean. If you guys want, you guys can use a lint-free towel or something like that. For me, I'm not too worried about it. So we're just gonna clean it with this rag. You also wanna get the inside of the boot if you can. Cause there's also gonna be some grease in there. And if you guys really wanna get all the grease out, you guys can get like a Q-tip or something and just wiggle it in there and see if you can get any old grease out. With the sliding pins nice and clean, go ahead and get some of the paste and just rub it on there. And then go ahead and put the boot over so that uh, it keeps it nice and secure so that uh, no debris can get in there. Now that we have our caliper sliding pin filled with some of its uh, fresh grease, let's go ahead and put it back in. Now that we have one of the caliper pins in, let's go ahead and install the second one. Let's repeat the same process. Let's just get some paste or grease, whatever you want to call it. Put it on the sliding pin. Go ahead and get your boot and pay attention to the boot. Usually there's a smaller size to it. The smaller size goes to the um, pin right here. So this is the smaller size. So I'm just going to put that on here. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, get the sliding pin and then just slide it into its place. And then now that we have that in there, we can see that it moves nicely and um, there's no hesitation when it slides back and forth. So that's what we want to do. And typically when you replace your brakes, you always want to add some of this paste um, to the sliding caliper pins so that they don't wear out and so that you don't have any uneven brake pad wear. Now that we have lubricated our sliding pins, let's go ahead and install our new brakes. Now in our new brakes, we also have this uh, mounting bracket right here. This is where the brake pad sits. Typically you want to replace this at the same time as your brake pads, but sometimes some brake um, brakes don't come with this. Like in my rear um, brakes, it didn't come with this in the package, so we're gonna have to just skip that on the rear. But for the front, since we do have this, let's go ahead and put it back in the car. So this is pretty simple to install. There are some grooves on the brake caliper right here that um, this lives in. So just go ahead and line those up and then just press into in its place and you should feel that it's nice and secure. Now let's go ahead and install the top one right here. This is pretty much the same. Line it up and then just push into its place. Just like that. So let's install our brake pad. Be careful not to touch the surface that is going to be touching the rotor with any oil. So let's go ahead and line those up right here. Just like that. Let's go ahead and install the other side as well. It's easy to just line up the bottom first and then go and line up the top section. All right. Now that we have our new brakes in, let's go ahead and turn attention to our brake caliper. Usually when you replace your brake pads, your brake caliper should be pressed more in this way. So when that happens, it's hard for you to fit your new brake pads in here. So what you guys can do is get yourselves uh, pliers or some big um, pliers like these right here and what you guys are pretty much going to do is just compress the piston right here for the brake caliper back into its bore. This is going to allow you to fit the new brake pads onto here. Alright so let's just line this up.
Now that we have our caliper on here, let's install the fasteners for the sliding pin. So let's go ahead and uh, hand tighten those down and we're gonna torque them down to 20 foot pounds. Once you guys run these down with your guys' hand, go ahead and uh, torque them down to 20 foot pounds of torque. Once you guys have torqued the fasteners down, let's go ahead and do the passenger side. Uh, since this is going to be pretty much the opposite of what we just did here, uh, I'm not going to waste you guys' time and show you guys the same steps. Just go ahead and do everything that we did here on the passenger side. And um, with that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the rear. Alright guys, so now that we are finished with the front brakes, let's do the rear. The rear brakes are pretty much similar to the front. There's two fasteners I need to remove and slide up the caliper. So let's go ahead and do that. These are all going to be 14 as well. Once we have removed the fasteners holding on the brake caliper, let's go ahead and remove it. If it's hard to remove, you guys can get a flathead and pry it in between the brake pads and the caliper. And then just wiggle it out. And it should come off. Just like that and then you can just leave this hanging down right here since it's uh, uh, connected right here through a wire so it should be fine now let's go ahead and remove our brake pads ever since I've got this car I've never changed the rear brake pads um, they look like they're kind of low but they're not too bad as you guys can see there's still some meat left in them it's not down to the uh, indicator right here but it's um, such a difference as far as um, the new ones go and then you guys can probably take a close look at here and then this is a little bit of an even wear right here that we have I don't know how good you guys can probably pick it up but it looks like we have a little bit more wear down here than we have over here so we're gonna have to lubricate this lighting pin so that uh, we can avoid that for our new brakes So this is pretty much the same. Go ahead and pull on these. And then this should come off. Now as you guys can see, this looks like it's kind of dry and there's like some debris in there. So it's getting stuck. You see this? It's been a while since these have been changed or um, lubricated. So we're gonna fix them up real quick. Let's go ahead and install our new brakes. Now that we have installed our brake pads, let's go ahead and compress our caliper piston. Now for this particular car, we can't just um, use an adjustable wrench and push that back in. Um, as you guys can see, we have some four little uh, indentations here on the piston. This is used for uh, security purposes, so you actually can't um, push this piston back in with the wrench. You have to use a specialty tool to turn this and push it forward so that the piston can get um, pushed back into its bore. So the tool that you're gonna need to use is this um, one of these guys right here. So this is a brake disc um, caliper tool. Now you guys can get this from Napa, O'Reilly's, um, maybe AutoZone for about for around ten bucks. Um, in order to do this, you're gonna have to use this tool because if you don't, it's gonna be very hard for you to turn that inward and push it all the way into its bore so um, spend some money and get a tool that is actually gonna make your life a little bit easier as far as this brake job goes now this is universal and it can work for different models in uh, different cars so it's not a complete waste of uh, money 
you're gonna eventually use this again when you need to switch out these brakes. So let me show you guys how this works. This is gonna be my setup. I'm gonna use a ratchet, an extension, and the cube. This takes a 3 8 ratchet. So this is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna pretty much just push against the caliper piston and then turn inwards. So before we do that, we're gonna make sure that our rubber seal right here around the piston is not um, getting like chewed up as we turn. So what we're gonna do is get ourselves a pick and you guys are gonna wanna be careful when you guys are doing this, but you're gonna pick up the gasket right here, this little rubber um, seal right here that goes around the piston. You're just gonna wiggle it around. Sometimes what happens um, with these rubber seals right here is that they get um, stuck in place and when you guys are rotating it, the rubber gets tangled up and it actually um, stops the piston from going back and forth. So we're gonna make sure that this is nicely freed up all the way around and then we're gonna start um, compressing our piston. So what we're pretty much doing is getting underneath the little rubber seal here and we're just gonna go around the circumference of it to make sure that it's freed up. And then once we have done that, we're gonna start compressing our piston. Once we have gone around the circumference of the piston right here with our pick, let's go ahead and start compressing this. So like I said, use your little tool we're gonna line it up. Um, usually this tool has around six different ways that you can put it up here. So we're gonna look for the one that has four pins sticking out. Which would be this one right here. So we're gonna use this side. All right, let's line up the pins right here with the indentations on the piston. We're gonna just go ahead and hold the rear of the caliper and we're gonna be turning and pushing forward as we spin. Once we have compressed our piston all the way back, let's go ahead and mount it back on here. Let's go ahead and uh, fasten down the caliper with the 14 millimeter bolts right here. If you find it that you can't um, tighten this up, you might need to rotate this right here so that they can stop. Let's go ahead and torque these guys down to 20 foot pounds. Now that we have installed our new brakes, let's go ahead and go in the car and we're gonna go ahead and step on the brake pedal about 10 times. This is gonna allow the fluid to go back into the pistons and uh, make your brake pedal nice and firm so that when you're driving, you are able to brake. So let's go ahead and pump our brakes. Go ahead and pump your brakes until you can't anymore. This should get nice and firm. Now that we have installed our new brakes, let's go ahead and install our wheels back on the car. We're just gonna hand tighten them down for now, but when we drop the car, we're gonna torque them down to 80 foot pounds. Once you guys have your wheels on, go ahead and lower down your car. Now that our car is on the ground, let's go ahead and torque down the lug nuts to 80 foot pounds. When you guys are torquing down the lug nuts, do a star pattern so that it can get torqued down evenly. So this is pretty much going to conclude the end of this video. 
If you guys did like what you guys saw, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. And like always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.